Hey, what's up? It's Hobart. Welcome to Android University, and very excited to show you the latest from Echelon and Team Synergy. This is release number 169 for the Samsung Galaxy S3 on Verizon. Now, I wanted to quickly go into the uh, forum here to just kind of show you the change log. He did quite a few things in the new build, of course, making this thing much more stable. You are able to clean flash this now, so no more dirty flashing. You wipe everything flashes just like you normally would and like you have before. Uh, he did say that he even erased the build 155 from his repo. So that's gone. It's forever gone. Now back from 155, some of the things that he did do, he added the Note 2 camera with best group shot. Number 161 is a big one here. Multi-window works from a clean flash. The ink lock screen has been added. I've had a few problems with that, and I'll show you here in just a second. Bluetooth has been fixed. The funny messages in, dial uh, in the dialog boxes are fixed. Location services, the gaps have been fixed. Double tap to open Google Now has been restored. P-Droid is working again. Ripple effect has been fixed. And some other things that he did, including fixing the lock screen torch. He also uh, tried to attempt to fix the Android system battery drain, and they added a brand new kernel from Ziggy as well. So those are some of the big things that he did add to release number 169. Let's go into the settings menu and see what we're working with here first. Go to About Phone. You see we are on Android 4.1.1, the VRBL K3 baseband. Once again, like I say in all my videos, if you are not on the VRBL K3 baseband, you've got to flash that on your own via a zip file. It's not the ROM's job. That's actually your job. Now you see I am on Lean Kernel 1.6. It does come with Ziggy's Kernel. Nothing against Ziggy or nothing, but I did have a problem earlier this morning when I flashed it. None of my uh, stuff on my external SD card would show up in the gallery. I figured that it might be a kernel issue, so I switched to Lean Kernel to see, and that wasn't the answer. For some reason, my external SD card wallpapers and uh, pictures were not showing up on or in the gallery, or in either of the galleries. So what I did is I went into the uh, Galaxy Note 2 camera. I chose the option to save to the external SD card. I took a picture and then went back to the gallery and all of my stuff from my external SD card was there. So, I don't know, some kind of a bug, but I'm just telling you my experience and how I fixed it. Um, and that's why I'm on Lean Kernel instead of Ziggy's Kernel. We are on Jelly Bean release number 169 from Synergy ROM, as you can see right there. Going back out to the settings menu here, it looks just like a normal TouchWiz settings menu. Uh, not much theming done on, on Synergy ROM in the settings menu, like say Galaxy Mod or Jelly Beans from Beanstown. Just a normal TouchWiz colorful full settings menu which I really love and the normal settings that you're going to see in here as well so with the settings menu done let's go check out the home screen here I did theme some of my app icons. I did use the icon changer here from the Google Play Store with some of the icon packs that they have. So you will get the stock icons, but of course you can always play around with the icon changer. And I do have a video on my Android University page that shows you how to use the icon changer and where you can get it and all that stuff. All right. So what do you say? Let's play around this thing a little bit. Let's go to the notification bar first. You can see what it looks like. You got that beautiful blue that he puts in there. All your toggles are there, including your brightness slider. Uh, if you go around, you can see all the toggles, airplane, your sound rotation, even your screen timeout, which I was playing with a little bit earlier. It was set at 30 seconds, and I like mine a little bit longer than that because sometimes, you know, I leave my phone and I don't want it turning off on me. So uh, your toggles are there, and that is what the notification pull-down looks like. And, of course, Synergy ROM here at the bottom, which I think is pretty cool. Let's check out Google now. As you can see, I do not, let's, let me turn off my GPS here. I do not have any of my uh, location or my GPS enabled, just my location settings. I know there's some problems with location settings and being able to go into Google now and, and have certain things find you without GPS on. Well, it seems like it's been fixed. It seems like it's working, at least on my device. Uh, without GPS on, I'm still able to get my weather and my traffic and all that kind of stuff uh, from Google now, viewing uh, nearby events and stuff. That all still works. So it seems like location services are working great. Now, speaking Speaking of GPS and location services, let's go over to the uh, GPS status application here. Turn my GPS on. And we're going to do a quick little lock on. Yes, there we go. 12 out of 18, 14 out of 18. And again, I am inside in my studio at work here. So uh, we're not under a clear sky. It locked on pretty quick. So GPS is working. It is locking on. And we're going to find out now if it's got us in the right location. I know it hasn't been a problem lately, but I still check it just in case to see where I'm at. And it shows me right there uh, at, uh, at work where I'm supposed to be, not five miles away. So your location, your GPS, and your, um, your, your VZ and other location services seem to be working okay, at least on my device. Uh, you see, I do have the 4.2 clock widget there. That's something that I saved uh, on my own on my SD card. And when I flash your ROM, I always move that into the system app folder, fix the permissions, and reboot. And of course, I'll have that application. It comes with the 
alarm clock and timer and all that kind of stuff. So if you're wondering, hey, Hobart, where'd you get that? Uh, I actually keep that on my SD card for my ROMs so I can flash that. I still do have the Samsung uh, TouchWiz weather widget that they have here, which will refresh, and as you can see, it's still working with location services. Um, it shows me where I am. It's updated, no problem, where it would not do that before on some other ROMs and even on this ROM uh, and earlier builds, location services kind of messed up. So uh, we've got GPS. We've checked Google now. We've checked our location. That's all looking good. Let's go into the uh, app drawer here and see what that looks like. This thing is really smooth, much smoother, smoother than uh, build number 155. As you can see, I'm flying through here with no problems. Same thing with my home screens, flying through here with no problems. On 155, I was having quite a bit of lag, which was totally fine. Echelon put it out before it was 100% ready because we asked for it, and we can't blame him for that. But it is definitely 1,000% better on uh, this build here. Wi-Fi is working great. 4G works great. There's no problems with that at all. Uh, let's go over to the kernel. We'll go to System Tuner. Uh, and again, I'm not on Ziggy's kernel. Nothing against Ziggy's kernel. I just flashed this just because I was trying to see about my gallery. Uh, but you can't overclock that one. You can't overclock this one as well. Lean kernel version 1.6. If you did not know, I Mozion did put out version 1.6 yesterday. So you can go download that from Roots Wiki and you can flash that to your device as well. You can overclock up to 1.9. You can also play with your voltages as well. And I'll show you my voltages and I'll give you a quick little screenshot here because I've had people ask, what are your voltages set at here? Well, right now they're at 1150. This is what you got to do. When you flash uh, a new kernel or the new ROM, you're going to have to go into your terminal emulator and do something. First, you're going to type in SU Enter. Okay? It's going to give you super user access. Then you're going to LK Config. Lean kernel config, you're going to hit enter, and you're going to get something here. You get stock behavior, you get a remove the above, override, and revert system to stock. We're going to choose number two to override, and what he's done is he's actually set the, uh, the, the uh, voltages at 1150 on purpose. There are different devices that can handle, there's what? slow, there's medium and fast, or nominal and fast, uh, depending on what phone you have, depends on how many volts your phone needs to run correctly. So he just did a, a default of 1150 just to make sure that everything was okay, and then of course if you can, on your certain device, you can undervolt and things like that. Now this is what my voltages look like, this is something that I've saved, if you can just quickly see here, I'll just give you a second to look, because I, like I said, I've had several requests, started at 875 at 384, and I slowly work my way up till I get to 1300 at 1 1.9 gigahertz. So look at it, hit pause, copy them down, whatever you need to do. But those are my voltages, and I get pretty good battery life. Speaking of the battery life, uh, let's go in and check battery. I've been playing with it with a little bit, but not too much. You can see I've got 3 hours and 31 minutes on the battery here, 47% screen. My screen time, I've got about 45 minutes on that there. Uh, Android systems at 17%, OS at 14%, maybe a little higher than I'd like to see, but I haven't used the phone much, so I'm going to wait for other things to take over. Maps down there pretty low. That was actually waking my phone up a little while earlier as well. So 85% in 3.5 hours, definitely not too shabby if you ask me. Uh, what else can I show you? Of course, you do get the Samsung Galaxy Note 2 camera and gallery. Okay, You also get the Android 4.2 camera and gallery. So you can take those uh, those Photosphere shots and the gallery. Of course, or the Photosphere only works with the 4.2 gallery, so that's why you get both of them. Plus, the application now in 4.2 is just one app with the camera and, and the gallery in it, so it's not a separate thing anymore. Okay. Uh, other than that, everything is looking great. It works wonderfully. I, I absolutely love it. I have not got to try every single thing that he fixed. Uh, I have not dug very deep into some of the really intricate settings like some of the others do, but overall, the stuff that I've played with in the last three, four hours has been flawless, okay? The uh, multi-window works over here. If you have not played with that yet, I'll show you how it works. You're going to long press backwards, okay? You long press that, and you got this bar that comes up on the side here. This is the split screen or multi-window, multi-view from the Galaxy Note 2 that was ported over thanks to Team Synergy. Now some of the other Samsung Galaxy S3 ROMs will get it as well. So big props for them figuring it out. Now this is basically what you can uh, what you can do is you can do a split screen. So let's try it out real quick. Let's go to uh, GPS status. You're going to click on an application. It's going to open up. Then if you want to do split screen, let's go to Google Maps. You're going to long press and either go to the bottom or the top. We'll go to the bottom here and it's going to open up Google Maps now. Now. So now we have two applications open at the same time. And I'll tell you, this comes in very handy for when you download a ROM. You can open up your Root Explorer, which can give you that MD5. 
and of course the download site which has the MD5 instead of writing that big long number down and checking it against the other one or opening back and forth between apps you can now check it right here with the split screen so that's one thing that I've found very useful so far you do have this center button here Oop. I don't want that. I want this. The center button here, or bar. You're going to want to raise that up to get more of the bottom application. Raise it down to get more of the top application. And if you want to flip-flop them, you use this button right over here, and it will actually flip-flop your applications for you. So you can do that and actually open up to full screen with the big square button as well. So that's how the multi-window works. You're able to get two applications open at the same time on your screen. Very cool. Thanks again to Team Synergy for getting that working 100%, and it is flawless. Now, it's something you might not know, too, is you can move this bar around with it closed you can long press on this here and actually slide it up here you can long press and slide it down here it's up to you okay now when it is open you're going to long press the same button and you're able to bring it to the bottom to the top to the right or to the left so it's got to be open you're going to long press the tab and you can move it when it's closed you can long press the tab and slide it Okay, so that's how that works, just in case you didn't know. And if you want to get rid of some of the extra apps that are over here, so you don't have to go down such a big list that every time you want to try to find something, you have this edit button here at the bottom. The edit button allows you to take them off of the bar and put them over here on the side. So things like Polaris Office Viewer, I'm not going to be using that. I'm not going to use my quick panel settings. Um, probably not going to use S Voice. I need to uninstall that anyway. I won't be using my settings. I won't use Setup Wizard. So this is a way to get some of these off of your sidebar so it's not so cluttered and move them out of the way and when you're done just hit done and now your bar has less applications in it the ones you're going to use most so you can quickly access them all right so that is the multi-window with split screen feature from the galaxy note 2 i showed you gps i showed you location i showed you uh, the uh, the app drawer, I showed you the home screens, I showed you Google Now, and we played with the kernel a little bit. I showed you how to, if you are using Lean Kernel, to go into the terminal emulator, type in LK config, choose option number two, and that is going to allow you to change your voltages for those of you who are wondering. Okay. Other than that, everything is wonderful. No problems at all. Big props to Echelon and Team Synergy for getting this baby out. Release number 169 for the Samsung Galaxy S3 on Verizon. Don't forget to check out some of my other videos. The latest and greatest for the Samsung Galaxy S3. We got ROMs, ROMs, and more ROMs. If you want to watch them before you flash them to see how it looks, or watch them while you're flashing them, it's all up to you. Android University, all one word on YouTube, and after a few requests, I did include a donate button, which you can or can't. No big deal. If you do, thank you in advance. If you like what I do, I appreciate it. Otherwise, thanks for watching my video today. Definitely flash this. It's Synergy ROM build number 169 with complete working multi-window feature and a whole bunch of more fixes. You can find it over on XDA. I'll throw the link in the description for you to download and have fun with it, all right? Happy freaking Friday to you. Have a great weekend, and I'll talk to you later. See ya!